back to the Hoodwood as it's your second visit this week. In any case, the rest of the NFL Week 15 picks, Snuffy's too busy with his crush to even think about you, so don't even ask him. Anyway, let's get into the picks. Let's start with the 10 and 3 Cowboys taking on the 5 and 8 Jaguars. Uh, a game well, being played at TIA Bank Field in Jacksonville. Comparison. That's a one entertainment kickoff purposes on only. Fox. I don't have Cowboys any money to pay you if you bet the Lions and lose. It's Last all week, on Cowboys you. defeated the Texans 27 to 23, while the Jaguars defeated the Titans 36 to 22. Now, the Pokes got a massive scare from their downstate neighbors and needed a late length of the field drive to avoid an embarrassing home loss to the one-win Texans. They head to Duval County to take on a Jags team that has played well as of late and has been racking up the points. In a pair of stunning row wins, the Jags notched 40 and 36 points against the Lions and Titans. Now, doing that against... Detroit and Nashville are one thing, but against Polk's defense, that is a lot better. Though they do have an annoying habit of falling asleep at the switch against lesser opponents, is a total another. If it were any other week, any other week, I'd put the Polk's on upset alert. But I think the Texans game scared them straight. And with the playoff berth in sight, they won't take the Jags too lightly. The pick here is Dallas. Next on the docket, we have the 10-3 Chiefs taking on the 11-1 Texans. At NRG Stadium in Houston, 1 o'clock kickoff on CBS, the Chiefs are 14-point favorites. Last week, the Chiefs defeated the Broncos 34-28, while the Texans lost to the Cowboys 27-23. Now, the Chiefs played a solid game last week, though they played a bit conservative in the second half, letting the Broncos get back into a game that they really should have been a blowout. They hit Houston, face the Texans, who are lamenting letting a signature win that would have salved an otherwise brutal season, get away from their hated neighbor upstate. The Chiefs will come into this game with their guard up as the Texans show that they can take the fight to any team in spite of their putrid record. That said, the Chiefs are a tad too talented to let a game like this slip by, though. The pick here is Kansas City. That's the Hoodwood Lock of the Week. Next on the docket, we have the 4-9 Cardinals taking on the 3-10 Broncos at Empower Field in Mile High in Denver. That's a 4-5 kickoff on Fox. The Broncos are three-point favorites. Last week, the Cardinals lost to the Patriots 27-13, while the Broncos lost to the Chiefs 34-28. Now, the Cards' miserable season got even worse, with franchise quarterback Kyler Murray going down with an ACL injury that ends his season. They now head to the mountains to face a team that might be more of a mess in the Broncos. Their, def their offense scored more points in a two and a half minute stretch in the second and third quarters last week than they had in 10 different games. I could use that as a fast fact, but still, when that stat came across, I was like, really? Good grief. This is a tough game to call, since both teams are offensively challenged despite an abundance of talent. I'll flip a coin here. It comes up tails. Bird tails, I guess. So I'll go with my pick of Arizona. Next on the docket, we have the 7-6 Patriots taking on the 5 and 8 Raiders at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. 405 kickoff on Fox. That game was flexed from primetime. Patriots are one point favorites. Last week the Patriots defeated the Cardinals 27 to 13, while the Raiders lost to the Rams 17 to 16. Now, how far has this once sexy matchup fallen? It was flexed out of the coveted primetime spot, and two AFC teams were pushed from CBS to the Netherlands of Fox away from CBS, who desires their current sexy late-day matchups between the Titans and Chargers and Bengals and Bucks. The Pats finally got that bounce-back win they've been searching for, but they're still looking up at a bunch of teams, not only in the AFC, but their own division. Now, the Raiders are their own set of problems. Still stung by getting driven on by Baker Mayfield and the Rams to uh, lose the game, they're still searching for a lot of consistency. Now, I'm no fact... I'm no fan of Mac Jones and the very vanilla Pats offense, which put which would put an insomniac to sleep, but they are a lot more talented than the Raiders, and Bill Belichick always has to give his former coaches a hard way to go. The pick is New England. Next on the docket, we have the 7-6 Titans taking on the 7-6 Chargers. Game being played at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California, 425 kickoff on CBS. The Chargers are three and a half point favorites. Last week, the Chargers defeated the Dolphins 23-17, while the Titans lost to the Jaguars 36-22. to 
Now, the Titans took an awful beating by the Jags in front of a shocked and sullen home crowd. Now have to travel west to face a Chargers team brimming with newfound confidence after squelching the dynamic Dolphins offense. Justin Herbert is getting his mojo back, and the Chargers defense, while they seem to mind wander at times, is playing fairly decently. Figuring out the Titans will make the most learned football scholar go crazy. Now, Derrick Henry is playing decently, to be sure, but the rest of the Titans' offense, they've grown, grown increasingly one-dimensional, and their defense is the definition of inconsistent, having increasing trouble against dynamic quarterbacks. They have taken L to the likes of Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, who have all carved out really good numbers against them. I think Justin Herbert does the same thing. Big here is the Los Angeles Chargers. Next on the docket, we have the 9-4 Bengals taking on the 6-7 Buccaneers at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. 425 kickoff on CBS. The Bengals are 3.5 point favorites. Last week, the Bengals defeated the Browns 23-10, while the Buccaneers lost to the 49ers 35-7. This is a fascinating matchup between the leaders of the new school Bengals and the old guard QB Bucks. The former coming off of a solid home win over their divisional rivals, while the latter come in off of a road thrashing in San Fran. The Bengals are finding their stride as they are getting a solid two-man running game from Samaj P. Ryan and Joe Mixon. And Joe Burrow leads a frightening passing game throwing the likes of Jamar Chase and company. If the Bucks are unable to get to Burrow, not just to not just sack. They have not get to but sack, as he still throws really great under pressure. It will be a really long day in the Bay. Tom Brady isn't scaring teams like he used to. The Bucks' offense, never won to score points in the best of times this year, is ill-equipped to trade scores with a high-powered Bengals offense that is walking talk offensively and is badly underrated defensively. I'm still waiting for another total team lapse by the Bengals to happen. You know they usually have a couple of them a year. But I'm going to go against my gut and think that the Bengals will shine on a national stage once again. I hope I'm not. My faith isn't, mil, uh, isn't ill-informed and ill-founded. The pick is Cincinnati. The Sunday night game is the 7-5-1 Giants taking on the 7-5-1 Commanders. Game being played at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. 8:20 kickoff on NBC. This game was flexed prime time. The uh, Commanders are four and a half pay point favorites. Last week, the Giants lost to the Eagles, 48 to 22, while the Commanders were on their bye. You know, I love reading how the NFL chooses that they uh, flex their games in the prime time. According to the NFL handbook. They want to, quote, get the most desired matchups and allow for surprise teams a chance to play their way on the primetime. Now, both teams are definitely surprises as no one expected them to be winning teams this late in the year. But when did you ever think that a pair of teams that are tied for last would be flexed into a Sunday nighter? Go figure. Now, the G-Men have fallen on tough times at the worst possible moment. Their offense has dried up. Their once formidable defense has gotten seriously leaky. And they're in a stretch where the competition is really unforgiving. Headed to D.C. to face the rest of the Commanders team still harboring playoff aspirations of their own. And their last game was against these same G-Men. Taylor Heineke is part of the reason why the Commanders are still very much in the playoff picture. And I think at home, against these slumping G-men, he continues to keep the Commanders in that position. The pick is Washington. Finally, we have the Monday night game, which is the 4-9 Rams taking on the 5-8 Packers at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. 8-15 kickoff. Game is going to be both on ABC and ESPN. The Packers are 7.5 point favorites. Last week, the Rams defeated the Raiders 17-16, to while the Packers defeated the Bears 28-19. to Now, facing another defeat in an already disastrous season, Baker Mayfield waited in the fray with the Raiders and led the Rams to a last-minute comeback for a win. They now head to the frozen tundra Lambeau Field to face a mediocre pack squad that's still trying to find its identity. Now, when the season was schedule was published, this looked like a hot matchup, but now one can only hope that it'll snow and then make the dynamic look better. In what I think might be a coin flip game, 
I don't trust Baker Mayfield in the least. Who am I kidding? Especially on the road and especially in a cold weather venue. The pick here is Green Bay. There you have it. Last week, I was 6 and 7 with Lock correct and Upset incorrect. Overall, in 123, 82 and 2, 10 and 4 on the locks, and 7 and 7 on the upsets. 